Hi, I'm Philip Preston. What we've got set up here is a test to show uh, how a non-stirred bath uh, is different from a stirred bath in sous vide cooking. We've got a data logger that's charting temperature to the computer showing the bath temperature and also I've just pulled from the refrigerator uh, 12 chicken breasts and we've inserted a hypodermic probe into two of those chicken breasts. What we're going to show here is exactly what happens to bath temperature and what happens to product temperature when you drop a dozen chicken breasts in a circulating bath versus a non-stirred bath. So we'll just start dropping product in right now. What I'm going to do with the probed chicken breasts is position them so that one is on the exterior of the group and one is at the interior of the group. Whew, that's hot. I have to act quickly to get all of them in at roughly the same time. We'll put this one at the exterior and we'll take this one and drop it right at the interior. There we go. So what we're doing is just seeing what happens to bath temperature, to exterior product temperature, and to interior product temperature. While that's taking place, uh, I'll also describe a few other advantages of a circulating bath. First of all, proper circulation in a bath is critical to temperature control. Anybody that's taken a bath and their feet are hot and their rear end is cold knows that if you move the liquid around, you get good uniformity within the tank or within the bathtub for that matter. So it's something that we all have seen, but what I'm uh, going to show here is exactly how this is impacting a chicken breast. And you know, with sous vide cooking, precision is everything and good uniformity. While this is, uh, while we're logging some temperatures here, I'll also mention that a, a non-stirred bath is difficult to store and it's more difficult to clean. I can't just take the tank and throw it into a dishwasher as I could with a sous vide bath uh, with a polyscience circulator. This circulator actually can be unclamped from the bath and put in a drawer and uh, take up about the same space as a stick blender, whereas a unit like this is going to take up significant amount of room in my kitchen. So ease of cleaning, ease of storage, and also precision are all good reasons to choose a circulating bath over a non-stirred bath. Okay, now that we've collected the data from this experiment, we'll review it. Just again to recap exactly what we've done. We've taken a non-stirred bath, filled it with 16 liters of liquid, taken an identical tank, stirred bath, filled it with 16 liters of liquid, taken 12 chicken breasts, put them into each of the tanks. We have temperature probes monitoring the tank temperature and a chicken breast at the perimeter and a chicken breast at the, uh, in, mixed in with the, the group of 12. What we have observed is that on the non-stirred bath, the introduction of the cold thermal mass of the chicken breasts dropped the temperature more significantly than on the stirred bath. We've also seen that the temperature of the chicken breast at the perimeter saw temperature differential between the core chicken breast on the non-stirred bath, whereas on the stirred bath, we had temperature uniformity amongst all of the product. And therefore, it's clear that the stirred bath will give you a faster response when you put product in and greater temperature uniformity and the precision required for 
proper sous vide cooking.